So one of the tools that I use fairly frequently in the shop is this. This is a uh, homemade spot welder. And it does pretty good. Unfortunately, I can't use it for very long because these sides, the insulated sides, are actually uh, made of a heavy plexiglass. So they get they can get too hot and, well, melt. And uh, that ain't good. This piece and this piece are solid aluminum, so they help quite a bit. Now I could put a fan in there, and that would probably help, but, uh, you know, why help when I can hinder, right? So uh, these are two uh, pretty thick washers, and uh, we can weld them okay. Let me uh, adjust the thickness here. So the thickness is adjusted by this uh, piece up here. And I just turn these spacers to wherever I need them to be. And can get pretty close to what I want. And there's one on each side so that I can lock them down if I've got a lot of repetitive stuff to do. Which uh, has happened once or twice, not a whole lot. Uh, I did build this for me, so it's not like it's going to see a whole lot of commercial use or anything. Alright, so now that we're set, yeah, we're set, we could take these two washers and just sandwich them together. In fact, I'm going to offset them so you can see them. And then we can lock it down. Which just broke my wood, but that's okay. And then turn the back switch on and then hit the pedal. And uh, there you go, it starts to weld. Now, I didn't grind the zinc coating off, so it's not going to want to weld that well. But considering it's a demonstration, it'll be okay. And uh, there you go, that's a uh, spot weld from the homemade spot welder. And it, you know, I could throw it down and it didn't break loose or anything. Still there. I'm going to hit it against stuff, and, uh, well, it finally broke. But, uh, I mean, it's a pretty good weld. I actually designed it for really thin stuff, though, so, like this uh, thin sheet metal here. Uh, this is stainless steel, and it may or may not weld. I don't know. I haven't tried this one. But, uh, we'll see. And that sounded like it welded. Move it again. Now this metal is not clean, so it may not want to weld, which that was actually a good weld, so. Alright, so that's it. And uh, that actually turned out to be fairly robust. So weld stainless too. But that's what it was designed for. And uh, let me take you for a quick walk around the machine. The machine is just the aluminum arms set with these plastic plexiglass hinges. There's a old microwave transformer that has been rewound with this, I believe that's double lot uh, welding wire. I can't remember if I use single or double lot. Um, and it's been soldered and smashed inside of these big lugs. There is a strip of quarter inch thick or uh, eighth inch thick copper that's wrapped around the front here to provide a better uh, conductor. And then uh, on the back here we have the safety switch off and then on. And then on the floor down here we have the pedal. So that I can weld it without touching stuff. On the top, over here by my broken piece, uh, see these were supposed to be maple, but I accident—I just used plywood because, frankly, I didn't know this would work. 
Everything else is made to stay together, but the uh, plywood box itself was just not. Um, and anyways, this clamp puts pressure on everything, and the wooden box flexes slightly to push more pressure down. And uh, that's what failed was that little plywood chunk there. Which I could put some glue on there, and I may do that one day. But uh, for now, uh, until I'm more confident in this plexiglass, I'm going to leave it unattached. So that's the welder. And uh, you'll see a video shortly about uh, welding the drive uh, coupling for the coffee roaster. And yes, I use this machine. The welding leads are, that's just copper grounding wire. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I found a uh, about a three foot long chunk of copper grounding wire on the ground one day. And um, ever since, that's been my welding leads. Just cut off about a one inch section, uh, file it to a point. Takes about two, two or three minutes. And when it's worn out on one side, I usually just flip it over. And as you can see, this, way, this side is pretty worn out, so I need to do it again or uh, just get rid of them. Eventually, I'll replace those with some nicer leads, but for now, they're doing their job, and they've been doing their job for about four years now, three or four years. Um, though only very recently did I machine the aluminum uh, top and bottom arms. Originally, they were also plexiglass, but since it gets pretty hot, they just didn't last. And uh, by the way, on the back there, which you can't tell, uh, attached to the top arm because it gets the hottest, it's the smallest. Oh no, I'm sorry, the bottom arm, the smallest arm, uh, is a little thermal shutoff. I found that this plastic melts at about 280 degrees, and so I put a little thermal shutoff at 200 degrees Fahrenheit uh, on the bottom arm and the power for the transformer actually goes through that first so if it ever gets too hot it'll shut off before it melts my plastic theoretically now since most of my welds are small I've never got to test that and I don't plan on it anyways that's my video for the night I did not do anything else on my coffee roaster drum I did make some modifications to the coffee roaster itself uh, primarily I moved it back one whole inch uh, and the reason I did that was because the uh, elements that I ordered are nine and a half inches and uh, well I'd need some space for to make some brackets underneath it here for, to hold them up and I uh, just wanted to do that. I also put a heat plate right here to help guard my motor and assembly from heat a little bit better. Um, let me pull this shaft out here. There's the drive nut that's been that was welded on, uh, and you can't really see it all the way, but it threads back up on there. Uh, it turns fairly consistently, and it'll be okay. In the front here, nothing's changed yet, but we'll see. Uh, one thing that did change is I would like to make some boost elements, and so today I sourced these uh, infrared quartz tube elements and they get extremely hot extremely quickly and uh, I'm proud to say that they may actually be exactly what I'm looking for and they were very inexpensive and as a side benefit I also got another motor so that's three I have now and this one will actually bolt on in place of the motor that's on there right now so if anything ever happens to that motor I now have a backup um, out of that deal also came another one of these and these are making some really handy parts buckets I should have been getting these years ago so uh, yeah that's it for the night here's the soon to be veins for the uh, coffee roaster uh, it's just another cheapo they're six dollars and ninety seven cents eight quart pots from Walmart they come with a metal lid which is right here that has really, really crappy rivets, so you can drill them out very easily. And uh, so far they seem like they're pretty robust, or at least robust enough to do this job. So uh, eventually I will probably write up an Instructables on this. Uh, oh yes, I also got a temperature controller. And uh, it's 
it's just pushed into here for now uh, because I stuck some elements in there and was running the motor using it. Dee -dee -dee. Using its little solid state relay here, uh, which was pretty impressive. The uh, element would heat up and the motor would stop spinning and the element would turn off. And once it dropped to a certain temperature, it cut back on. It was very nice to see that it worked. Unfortunately, all the instructions are in Chinese and uh, it sucks. I, my Chinese is not good. But that's it for the night. Going in, we'll see what tomorrow brings.